Okay, so we'll take today a purely geometric point of view on the concept of curvature. Well, the concept itself is very geometric. So, uh, how do we think about curvature? Well, the very curious thing about curvature is that everybody has intuitive understanding of that concept. Everybody can say whether the curve is curved more at one point or the other. If I give you this point number one on the curve and this point number two on the curve, there is uniform agreement, I suppose, that the curve is curved more at the point two than it is curved in the point one. Now, let us try to analyze that and try to come up with some numerical well, computational description of this intuition. So what is curvature? How to measure it? Well, what is it that we think about when we compare curvature here to the curvature there? Well, what we think about is how the curve turns as we follow the curve. Right? So as we go from this point to that one along the curve, the direction of the motion is determined by the tangent line. So we essentially look at the tangent lines and we see how those tangent lines turn. And what we observe is that as we move over here, the tangent line turns much quicker than it turns there. So the tangent line turns much quicker. What does that mean? How can we translate that into rigorous language of mathematics? Well, it seems to have something to do with the rate of change. It means that tangent line changes faster here than there. So we are looking at the rate of change of the tangent line with respect to some parameter. So basically we are looking at the rate of change of tangent line. So what exactly about this rate of change? Well, we are not interested in the shift of the tangent line. We are only interested at the angle of rotation. Right? So we are actually looking at this angle of how the tangent line rotated. We look at this angle of how that tangent line rotated, and we somehow conclude that this tangent line rotates quicker. So we actually are looking at the angle between tangent lines. Well, uh, what I'm missing here so far is uh, a way to translate this picture into algebra. And the standard way is to introduce coordinate system and to describe the curve on the first place algebraically. So what would be an algebraic description of a curve? Well, the curve is going to be described parametrically so that we can think about a particle moving along this trajectory given by the parametric presentation f of t and then we fix this point and let's say this is position when t is equal to some fixed number well, let's make it f of t. So that's position of at the point of our interest. And then we suppose that we move the point further. So how far should we move it? Well, we move it a lot. Uh, well, a little, right? So we move it to the position f of t plus some time delta t. And we suppose delta t is small, right? because we look at how tangent line changes in the neighborhood of that point. So what we 
compare now is the directions, basically, of these tangent lines. So we measure the angle between the tangent lines at f of t and f of t plus delta t and that be related to something saying that this angle changes at this point slower than it changes at that point slower with respect to what? well the natural guess would be to change with respect to delta t well, is that right? is that fraction going to reflect a geometric property that we see? well a way to check it would be to suppose that we check the fraction at this point and we move along the curve differently first time we move slowly and if we move slowly from this point to that point then the angle is going to be whatever the angle we measure divided by long time that we spent moving from here to there so it will be that angle divided by large number now if another particle was moving along the same trajectory and it was moving fast, quickly then it will spend only a short time from here to there between these two points and we will have exactly the same angle related to short time, to a small number so exactly the same point of the curve will result in different, very different numbers in our computation so we should not relate the angle to the delta t now let's think, what should we relate it to? well, a natural guess would be to relate it to something geometric, to something that we see and what we see is the length of this path so length of the curve from f of t to f of t plus delta t alright, so we relate the change of the angle to the distance traveled and then of course this ratio is going to be different for different points, for different delta t's but as usual in calculus we take the limit of that and hope that the limit as delta t goes to zero of that fraction is going to be a variable numeric uh, invariant of that point a number that would reflect that geometric property of curvature being smaller here than there.